Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. It's a girl funny lungu back with another reaction video. If you're new to this channel, make sure to give this video a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and of course, do not forget to subscribe. Like I said, my name is Fanny Lungu, and on this channel, we post reaction videos each and every day. So if there's something that you guys want us to react to, let us know by dropping the link in the comment section below, and we'll do it for you. A big shout out to everyone that has subscribed to our channel and a big shout out to the person that suggested this. So today we're going to be reacting to Dr. Zaki Naik look up to Dr. Zaki Naik look up to these great scholars for solution of Islamic issue Ramadan 2020 question and answers. So without wasting time, let's get into the video. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Click to subscribe believing beings and press the bell icon to get notified about new videos. Next question. Habiba Malik from India. Can you list the name of reliable scholars who you turn to for fic issues so that we also turn to them for our fic issues? This is a very big question. The answer can go on for us together. I will try and answer in short because which scholars do I turn to for my fic issues? You know, scholars are divided into classical scholars, the medieval scholars, the contemporary, the pre-modern, the modern, you know. As far as the beloved Prophet said, we look our sharia is based on the Quran and Sayyid Hadith, on Allah and the guidance of the Prophet. And a Prophet said, the best generation is my generation then the next generation, then the next generation. So after the Prophet, the best are the Sahabas. Then are the Tabain, then are the Tabi Tabain. So when you look for any Dalil, the number one is Quran, then the life of the Prophet, after that is the Sahaba, then Tabain, then Tabi Tabain. So but naturally, the best scholars for Fiqh is other Sahabas. Hulfa Rashidi, the Sahaba. Then would be Tabain, then would be Tabi Tabain. So when you look at what, what was their opinion, when they, and there were differences in opinion among the Sahabas, and then we see the Sahaba, then we see which some Sahaba were specialized more in the Quran, some in other aspects, some, some in Mirat, different, different. So based on that, number one are the Sahaba, Khulfa Rashidin, the Sahaba. After Allah and the Sul, with the Khulfa Rashidin, then would be the Sahaba. Then Tabain, Tabai, Tabain. Then you have the classical scholars that are there. Uh, you have the four Imams, the Imam Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik, Imam Shafi, Imam Hanbal. Ahmad ibn Hanbal, may Allah have mercy on all of them. There were many Imams, 50, hundreds of Imams were there at that time. But these four, they, they were, their students, mashallah, were, were, were able to spread the teachings more. These four were the top Imams. There were other top Imams also, but maybe the student didn't prom promote the teaching so much. So these were the top four Imams that we have. And all of them, mashallah, I love them, I respect them, I refer to them. Then, then we have the Muhaddisim. Imam Abdul Ibn Hanbal was a Muhaddis, Imam Malik was there. But then we have you know, Imam, Imam Bukhari, we have Imam Muslim, then, then Abu Dawood, then Tirmidhi, then Nasai, Ibn Majah, all these, they were scholars. And I look up to them and then I check. Then we have the Mufassiri, Ibn Qasir, then we have Tabari, then we have Qurtubi, and the list is long. Therefore, I said the answer is very, can't give a short answer. So these, then we have the classicals, then we have Sahaba, then the classical scholars we have, their level is different. Then we have Ibn Hajar, who, who wrote the Shara of the Bukhari. Many, then we have the many, I mean, you can keep on naming, but these, these are the ones that I can recollect now. Then we, then we have the medieval scholars, you know, a few centuries later, then we have Ibn Taymiyyah, Oh, earlier we, uh, uh, then we have Imam an -Nawi. Then we have, after a few hundred years, uh, we have Ibn Taymiyyah, mashallah, a great scholar. Then uh, Imam uh, Ibn Jawzi, several. Then coming down the line, we have the recent scholars. You call them contemporary scholars. The, or you call them the modern scholars. I have divided this into two levels, in two parts. One, which were the few decades earlier and are not living any longer, and one which are living. 
in between there are many other scholars that I did not name but what I could recollect in those scholars in the recent few decades but are not living I would the really that I appreciate and I all look forward is uh, is the Sheikh Ibn Uthaymi Sheikh Nasir Al Albani Sheikh Bin Baz and unfortunately these three great scholars of our time you know when i mean the when we started doing dawa earlier they they expired within a few years a span of few years I mean the late 90s or the early 2000s and after that at that time that i believe one of the best scholars living that time was abdullah ibn jibreel sheikh abdullah ibn jibreel again he from riyadh and i met him several times and whenever i had any problem i have to go to him and look forward to his reply at that time he was one of the best living scholars and allah also my lifted him mashallah and may allah grant jannah to all these scholars who have mentioned uh, may allah's mercy be on all of them rahimallah now that we have among the scholars truly really, frankly now we have very few handful of scholars who we can really call them scholars scholars are many but we really can you know the the level of uh level of fiqh and the level of intelligence and the way to reply and to analyze according to me one of the best scholars today living or two best scholars one would be sheikh mohammed hasan addadu he's from mauritania but since the past few years he living in turkey in istanbul and i've been meeting him for several years alhamdulillah the last time i met him was at the kl summit and before that when i was in turkey he is one of the best living islamic scholars in the world as well as sheikh abdul aziz atrafi and the other one that i can think of and i can name is sheikh muhammad salim munajjid and all these scholars every year mashallah i meet them many times for the last several years i've been meeting them except you know now some of them are in custody so since the last couple of years that they have been custody i could not meet some of them so these that i can think of today are the top scholars and who i refer to but you have to realize that there are different specialties for example there is a speciality of islamic finance in islamic finance previously i know i used to discuss with dr umar chapra is an indian then became a saudi and Dr Siddiqui he's from India again and they were very well learned in islamic finance and the one that I gained the maximum knowledge as far as islamic finance is concerned is is Dr Hamid Hassan he is an egyptian he there alive but very old man like him health and later on he spent many years in pakistan and he was the founder of the islamic university in islamabad in pakistan and he was the one who made the university or the rector for many years i think he spent 19 years there if i'm not mistaken then he shifted to dubai and he is mashallah according to me the father of islamic banking he was the chairman of more than 20 islamic banks he has converted many conventional bank to islamic bank and the maximum knowledge that i gained when i sat with him for us together we also invited him to bombay uh, for the islamic peace conference i think in 2007 or 2009 i don't remember so in terms of islamic finance knowledge one of the large one of the best scholars today living is Dr Hamid Hussain Hassan and the other one is <laughs> Mufti Taqwi Usmani Mashallah Maulana Mufti Taqwi Usmani is also a great scholar these two scholars are one of the highest in the field of islamic finance he from pakistan and i met him a couple of times when he came to malaysia mashallah he has great knowledge and what we find that in finance the hanafi fuqaha the hanafi scholars have done more advanced research on islamic finance as compared to others so each one has its speciality so in finance but natural i would believe more in uh, 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 mufti taqi usmani or dr amir hussain hassan then sheikh dadu because that is their speciality each field like in loga 
according to me one of the best person according to me is dr fab darheem dr fab darheem originally an indian then shifted to saudi arabia and he was the head of the loga department in the starting when loga department for non arab started in the islamic university of medina and when i tried to find which is the best teacher i can learn with i someone told me it is fab darheem i said how will this person give me time so i went there and i was shocked he said you know i was there the lecture you gave a few weeks back in medina i was there on the sitting in the first row so mashallah he agreed to give me 5 hours every day and we were supposed to spend 6 months so that the time i took out my khama my 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 saudi resident permit in the year 1997 and unfortunately i could spend hardly about 3 3 and a half weeks with him there was an important issue in india i had to go back so for 3 weeks mashallah i sat with him 5 hours a day immediately after the zohar salah up to the end of maghrib uh just before maghrib spend about 4 or 5 hours every day and there i learned he was one of my first few teachers mashallah and the knowledge he has he has he knows about 70 to 20 languages the fluency he has ma- mashallah and then the other person i studied who was also great in the hadith is uh, uh, dr zia rahman asked me dr zia rahman asked me again is a indian you will be shocked to know he was a hindu then he migrated to saudi arabia he did his master he did bachelor master phd became the head he became the dean of the hadith department in islamic university of medina and i used to sit with him twice a week and my basis of hadith uh, i learned from him mashallah he is a great scholar and he has compiled after he retired in the past he spent about 9 18 years in compiling all the sahih hadith in one volume and that was my desire when i used to speak in lectures the quran and sahih hadith now where is the sahih hadith your bukhari muslim but that's not all so what he did he spent about 15 to 20 years and compiled all the sayyid in one volume and called it jami kamil and that's in that's printed in 12 volumes there's a mukhtasar version of it which is in five volume and we are translating into english and you know when i say quran it's now all even if not 100% you can easily claim that more than 95% of the sayyid hadith are there and then this hadith is also then bukhari chapter number so and so volume number so and so also then muslim also then abu daud so all the sayyid hadith you can find in that he so there are other scholars in the field of science is there like dr musleh he specialized in science then you abdul majid hasan nani in science so they are very in terms of fiqh issues as i told you that there are many scholars there are other scholars also there are there many like uh, sheik uh, saad nasr shetri he is also a great scholar but the one that i really appreciate amongst all of them is sheik mohammed hasan adadu sheik abdul aziz tarifi and and uh, sheikh muhammad saleh al munajjid and what sheikh muhammad saleh al munajjid has done that mashallah he has his own own website islam qni which is the most popular islamic website in the world and most popular site in fafwa so if you have any questions the best answer you can get is go to islam qna it's in 14 languages hope this answer is in short it's a very short answer you can elaborate for us together on this This was a very interesting video. Uh you just can't learn about something from school. You shouldn't rely on our educational system to give you all the knowledge that you need in life. There's just too much knowledge out there that um our school systems don't accommodate. That's why it's good to be out there looking for information. I've always said for us doing these reactions or at least for me doing these reactions is another means of me learning about new stuff that I wouldn't even think of um trying to search for or whatever the case so I'm even shocked he's saying this was a short answer this was quite a long and elaborative um answer he gave to the question po- by whoever asked the question it's really important in life to look up to people that actually have like a, a solid um 
a solid one build up i guess if i should quote that what i'm saying is we want to look up to someone that um he was talking about scholars these scholars have actually proven what they wrote or whatever works they put out there hence their theories can be proven that being said because their theories can be proven they've provided a solid ground for whatever and foundation for whatever they were putting out there so we shouldn't just be blindly following people or looking up to people we should look into people that we know we're going to learn something from we know we're going to get um theories that we can prove or dis disprove i mean theories always come with the method of the way something was come up anyway otherwise it's good to sit down and watch someone talk highly of um people that inspire him or people that he goes to when he needs help because you'd think you'd sit here and think oh dr zaki knows everything but here he's proving us wrong by saying you know what even though i know that i know this this lot there's still more that i have i had to learn and i have to learn from other scholars as well which is very very nice i mean let's take a page from this uh speech that he was from these statements that he was making otherwise make sure to give this video a thumbs up share it with your friends and of course do not forget to subscribe and i'll see you in my next reaction video